let's see how we are going to do synthetic division for polynomials. And the version that I will show you in this video is just that we'll be dividing x minus a number we call that c. Could it be plus? Yes. Just like the first example right here. Well, what if we have a number in front of the x that says 3? Well, that will be a topic for another video. So if you take a look right here for the first question, we have x plus 4 on the bottom, but you can look at this as x minus negative 4, right? So the c value in this case is negative 4. So how does this work? First, you are just going to draw something like this. And then you are going to write down the coefficients from the top. Just put down the coefficients. So first, we will have 3x squared. Just write down the 3. Next, we have plus 5x. Just write down the 5. And then lastly, we have the minus 1. Just write that down. Then you want to put down this number here, which is negative 4. So it's just the opposite of the original. Now, this is how we proceed. First, you bring down the 3. So we will have 3. And then we are going to take this number, negative 4 times 3, and then we put it here. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. And then the biggest difference between synthetic division and long division is that for this right here, we are going to add. So we will have to do 5 plus negative 12. So we will end up with negative 7. And then we repeat the process. Negative 4 times negative 7, put it here. Negative 4 times negative 7 is 28. And then we add them up. That will be 27. This is the remainder. Let me just write that down. So we're pretty much done. But of course, we need to know how to write our answer. So firstly, we will have to know that originally we started at x to the second power and we divided by x to the first power, right? So the result will be x to the first because the power will go down by 1. And they are going to be right here. The first number is 3x to the first power, and then the next thing is just the constant term. So you will have 3x minus 7, and this is the quotient part. After that, we are going to add. The remainder is 27. Just put that down here, and then divide it by the original denominator, which is x plus 4. So this is how you can present the answer, just like that. Let's try another one. What if we have x cubed plus 8 over x plus 2? Firstly, the x plus 2 is the same as x minus negative 2. So we will be using this number later. OK, then let's go ahead and draw the bars. First, we have 1x to the third power, so that's 1 but we don't have any x squared, right? In that case, we must have the 0. 0 x squared, we must write that down. And then we also must have 0 x because there was no x, right? And then lastly, we have the 8. So let me write this down. I will explain more a little bit. This is the same as x to the third power plus 0 x squared plus 0 x plus 8 and then over x plus 2. We must write down all the coefficients for all the powers. That's why we have the 1, 0, 0, 8. Why is that though? Well, just imagine if I want to ask you to write me a check for $1,008. So I'll put on $1,000 and $8, right? Okay. How would you write that? 1 and 8? No. This is just 1 in the thousands place. And then the 8 is in the unit place. We must have the zeros for the 100 and also zero for the tens, right? 1008. So the zeros right here are needed, just like the placeholder. So that's exactly the same idea as what we are doing right here. We must have the 0x squared and also the 0x, right? So keep that in mind. Then we are going to put negative 2 on the outside, which is this number. And then proceed. Bring down the 1, so it's 1. And then negative 2 times 1, which is negative 2. And we do what? We add them up, which is negative 2. Continue. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 
four. Zero plus four is four. Then negative two times four is negative eight. Combine, we end up with zero. Okay. It's x cubed, so that means the result here will be what? x squared, and the next is x, and then no x. So let's write down 1x squared minus 2x plus 4. And since the remainder is 0, we don't have to write down anything at the end. This will be it. And maybe you notice that, in fact, we could have done this with factoring. This is factorable, and then you actually get the following. Let me just review this with you guys real quick. So when we have x cubed plus 8 over x plus 2, the top can be looked at it as x to the third power plus 2 to the third power over x plus 2, right? And then remember the formula. When we have a cubed plus b cubed, this is equal to a plus b times a squared minus a b plus b squared. Well, on the top, we can apply that. A is the x, b is the 2. So the top will be x plus 2 times a squared, which will be just x squared. And then minus these two terms together, which is x times 2. And that's right as 2x. Lastly, plus b squared, which is this 2, and then square that over x plus 2. So we can factor it, and we can see that we can cancel this and that. So we do end up with x squared minus 2x plus 2 squared, which is 4. And that kind of explains why this formula is the way it is. So that's it for this one. Now let's do another one. OK, so we have x minus 5 already. So this is a number that we'll be using. And let's just go ahead and draw this. 4x to the third power, negative 3x squared, and then plus 1, x to the first power, and then minus 5. And then put a 5 on the outside. Remember, it's the opposite, right? If you see negative 5 originally, then you do the opposite, which is positive 5. Okay, bring down the 4, and then do 5 times 4, which is 20. Negative 3 plus 20 is 17. 5 times 17 is 85. And when we add them, that's 86. And then this is going to be a big one. 86 times 5 is 430. And then when we add them up, we get 425. So let's see. This 4 will be what? Originally was x to the third power, so we will get 4x squared, and then 17x, and then 86, right? So 4x squared plus 17x plus 86 plus the remainder 425 over the original denominator. And that will do it. All right, one more. So this is a fourth degree one. Still the same thing. 4x to the 4th power, and then do we have any x cubed? No, right? There was no x cubed, so let me indicate that we have a 0x cubed, so we must have the 0 here. And then let's continue with a negative 41x squared plus 1x to the 1st power, and then lastly with the negative 15. Here we have x minus 3, so we will have to put down positive 3. Okay, continue. Bring down the 4. 3 times 4 is 12. Add them up. That will be 12. And then 3 times 12 is 36. Negative 41 plus 36 gives us negative 5. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. Combine them, we get negative 14. Then lastly, negative 3 times negative 14 gives us negative 42. Combine these two together, we get negative 57, and that's the remainder. 
Okay, it was x to the fourth power, so this will be 4x cubed, 12x third power, and then minus 15x squared, sorry, 12x to the second power, minus 5x, and then minus 14, right? So 4x cubed plus 12x squared minus 5x minus 14. Here the remainder is negative, so you have two ways to do it. You can say plus and then put the negative 57 over the original denominator. This is fine. Or you can also just put a plus and a negative together. Of course, that will be a minus right there. So either way, it's okay.